that. Uh, the, um, I just want to follow up from the questioning from um, uh, Senator Madigan. I, I mean, I find it uh, well, deeply offensive that somebody who is, um, as, as Senator Madigan has just done, concerned about the human rights abuses being perpetrated in the region, a region where there are mass killings, where people's right to protest peacefully is being suppressed is somehow regarded as endangering the safety of the West Papuan community. That is, in fact, a, a very deeply offensive inference uh, to describe that our advocacy for people whose basic human rights, rights are being deprived is somehow regarded as smug. I didn't say that at all. I didn't say anything remotely like that. And uh, what I did say is something I stick to absolutely. And that is, we raise human rights. It's the Australian government position to raise human rights in Papua. Our ambassador does it regularly. Our ambassador has formal meetings with the Indonesian government to pursue our policy of talking about rights in the Papuan provinces. That's the first point. That is our policy, it's the Australian government policy. So don't attempt to arrogate it to yourself it's the Australian government policy to pursue human rights issues in Papua. What I did say is that people who are hold out to the people of Papua, the promise of success in secessionism. But who's doing that? The promise. Who's doing the people that? Who, the people who fly Papuan flags and the people who talk the language of secession and independence. They are, they are planting in the minds of people who actually live in the place the notion that this campaign has some kind of international resonance. And that is a cruel deceit, a cruel deceit by self-indulgent people, safe in their own bids, safe in a democracy, a cruel deceit about the potential of a demand for secessionism. Australia and the world, Australia and the world recognise Indonesian sovereignty over West Papua. Uh, can, can I just suggest to you that it is incredibly patronising and incredibly arrogant that you, you would suggest that a movement within a nation of people who are able to make decisions for themselves are somehow being controlled by people externally, planted the seed of successionism, this isn't a seed that has been planted by anyone, Senator Carr. This is this is the, this green, is, this this is is the green Party can I finish, cause can of I, the day. Can I finish the my cause du jour. Can I finish that's, my that's question, the, please? That, that's, that's what you reduce it to. It's can, a fun. It's, it's a game can for I the Green finish Party. My it's a question, little game, Senator Carr. but its implications on the ground can in I Papua finish my can be very serious. Thank you, can, Sen Senator Finatelli. Well, I, again, I find the notion that somehow standing up for the democratic rights of a people is a cause for the day. Uh, that is, again, deeply offensive. Now, I personally have never uh, stood up for uh, independence for the West Papuan people. I have stood up for the right of the West Papuan people to make decisions for themselves. Uh, and you talk about the Australian government raising the issue of human rights with the Indonesians. Well, let's talk about some specific examples. Um, on uh, May 1st, there was a peace, peaceful protest to commemorate the uh, 50th anniversary of Indonesian control over the province. And we had the Australian media, media reporting that police reacted violently to the protest. Two people died as a result, many more wounded. Um, how did you raise those concerns with the Indonesians, Senator Carr? Well, I'll, uh, I'll confirm to the committee I'll confirm to the committee in the, um, in the next few hours, but to the best of my recollection, that was one of the cases raised by our embassy. Our embassy sought further information and continued to express Australian concerns about the behaviour of security forces, including police, in West Papua, but we do it routinely. We uh, do it routinely. That's the Australian government position. Okay, so but I, we I, do I, it. We do it in the context of accepting Indonesian sovereignty over the territories as a matter of international law. 
Well, you put to me that you, the Australian government stands up for human rights abuses. I am now putting to you a number of human rights abuses that have occurred, and I'd like to seek documentation as to the response All right, well, you, from the you, Australian you give, government. You give me the list, and I'll uh, take the, them on uh, notice. This, a second rally on the 13th of May was, uh, was called to protest the events uh, where people had died. During the rally, we saw local groups claim that security forces arrested uh, four protesters. Um, and uh, including Victor Yama, who's the chairman of the West Papua National Committee. Um, what was the response of the department uh, to uh, uh, those arrests? Well, well I'll, I'll give you a response when we've got them. Uh, <clears throat> but, but again, I underline the fact that our, we've, we've regularly responded by pursuing cases like those, and I would suspect have raised precisely those cases. Well, I'd, I'd prefer more than suspicions. I'd like some yeah, well, you'll get, um, you'll documentation. Get them. You'll get them. I'll take it on notice. Thank you. That Thank you. Are there other, other issues you're yes, there are. pursuing? Yes, there are. Um, now, I'd like to know if you're aware of the current status of Victor Yamo. Do you know where he's being held? Um, and whether DFAT has any specific concerns for his welfare? Uh, Senator, we're aware of a variety of reports of uh, incidents that you cite, the, the 1st of May uh, shootings and uh, reported deaths. Uh, we haven't confirmed those yet. We've been seeking confirmation of them. Um, we haven't got uh, advice yet on the specific whereabouts of, um, of those people. We are seeking those advice, that advice. But we're not in a position independently to uh, investigate those. The Australian government isn't in a position independently to investigate those. But we are in a position uh, to ask questions, and um, we will be. We are asking those questions uh, through our embassy in Jakarta. And when we get answers, we'll provide them to you. So, can I then confirm that you are not aware of the whereabouts of Victor Yama, who's been arrested? No, I'm not specifically aware of that at okay. this time. But, but we can find you, that out. But have you asked the question? Yeah, I'm, sh the, I'm sure the Post, as part of its regular dialogue, is seeking advice about uh, the circumstances of a range of people who have been listed in various lists. But we will find that out specifically. OK, thank you. Uh, I'd also like to draw your attention to reports about a number of killings in the Punkak Jaya region uh, since April, with up to 11 people who are dead and 40 people missing. Uh, we've got the West Papua National Committee alleging that uh, Kapasas troops were involved in rep reprisals against civilians uh, from the 1st of uh, May attacks, uh, or protests. And uh, we've also seen some photographic evidence that's been uh, provided. Has DFAT raised uh, specific concerns about that issue? Again, we're aware of those um, eleven, th those reports of those eleven deaths. Um, at this stage, we don't have again verification of that information. Uh, we have um, been our post again is seeking further details, but um, we're aware of those reports, and we can get that further advice to you in the context of the other report back that I just said we'll try to get for you. Uh, the um, report from the NGO Papuans Behind Bars during the period of 30th of April to 13th of May indicated that um, three Papuan activists were killed in Sarong, 36 arrests in Tameka uh, and a number of other regions, uh, with 30 remaining in detention. Uh, a number of injuries uh, resulted from those attacks. Has DFAT uh, raised those specific um, concerns uh, with the uh, Indonesian government? Well, again, those fit into a pattern of, uh, you know, a pattern of cases that we would need to get you adv further advice about. So, again, these are raised by our embassy in uh, Jakarta, with um, through their sort, you know, through their contacts both in the provinces and and in Jakarta, and we'll need to get specific advice back through them. This is not something that DFAT does in Canberra, but this is done through our post uh, in Jakarta. Uh, the um, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights expressed concerns over what she described as a crackdown on mass demonstrations across Papua, and describing in particular the protests on the 1st of May as an unfortunate example of the ongoing suppression of freedom of expression and excessive use of force in Papua, uh, saying that she urged the government of Indonesia to allow peaceful protest and hold accountable 
those, in, those involved in abuses. And those concerns were also expressed by Amnesty International and a range of other uh, academics. Uh, has DFAT uh, expressed those concerns to the Indonesian authorities? Yes, well, um, the, the minister, as the minister has said, uh, the Australian government, from the prime minister, the minister himself, um, the ambassador and others continue to raise our concern about evidence of the cycle of violence in the Papuan provinces. This is something we are concerned about. We want to encourage uh, President Udiono's program of special autonomy to give the uh, Papuan people a greater sense of autonomy and ownership in their own provinces. Um, our concern about uh, the issues that the special rapporteur raised are issues we, we share. And there indeed they are issues that the Indonesians themselves share. President Udiono shares them. Um, this is why, as uh, Senator Carr says, the uh, Indonesians raise these issues with us themselves. So yes, the answer is uh, yes, we, are, we do share those concerns. They are part of our regular dialogue on um, you know, human rights and uh, human rights conditions in the Papuan provinces. Uh, well, I suppose on that point, I mean, do you think that Indonesia's made any progress um, in this area? I mean, are we seeing um, any progress in the area of allowing peaceful protests in uh, West Papua? Well, I think um, the situation, and this is something the Indonesian government itself recognises, is that uh, the situation in the Papuan provinces remains less than satisfactory. And President Udiono and others, um, you know, the foreign minister and others uh, in the government of, uh, of Indonesia do recognise that as a fact. And um, this is why, you know, they formed uh, organisations like uh, uh, organisations to promote autonomy, economic development, um, to try and improve the situation on the ground, the rights of people on the ground uh, in, in, uh, in the Papuan provinces. So yes, I think that you're, you're, it's correct to say that the situation is not, uh, not adequate yet. The Indonesians themselves recognise that, including on issues of freedom of expression and so forth. And I think if you ask any of the Indonesians uh, officials and people concerned with this policy area, they will, they will say, yes, it is not yet where we want it to be. Um, uh, is the department aware of any successful prosecutions of Indonesian soldiers for human rights abuses in West Papua? Um, no, I'm not aware specifically of any specific uh, prosecutions recently, but it is quite possible that such uh, cases have taken place, and I'll certainly take that on notice, and we can ask our post but, uh, you know, Indonesia is, as you know, uh, now a democracy. Uh, Indonesia does uh, have military and civilian courts where those who have been found guilty of crimes, including in the military, have been brought before uh, military tribunals and tried. So, yes, it's, it's quite possible. And we will, I will get, you know, a specific answer for you on that on notice. Thank you. I suppose what I'm, what I'm getting at is that we have repeatedly um, uh, raised uh, concerns about um, many of these allegations, and it appears that we're having no discernible impact. It doesn't appear that there's any significant progress being made in the region. Um, it doesn't appear that at least um, we're not aware of any successful prosecutions for human rights abuses, but I, I'll await that information. Mm. Um, uh, to confirm that. Um, what are the other options for the Australian government and for the department um, that might allow us to exert some influence over the um, hugely concerning situation in the region? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with you that there's been no progress. I mean, if you consider the situation would you, would you in that, the Papuan pro no, if you consider the situation in the Papuan provinces now compared to the situation in, say, the 90s, the recognition by the Indonesian government that there are significant problems of economic, social, political marginalisation of people is very significant. The fact that the uh, government has brought in a special autonomy package mm -hmm. is a recognition 
and President Yudhiyono and others are fully cognizant of that, that there are significant problems in, in those provinces. So there's a, a, there's a qualitative um, shift in the Indonesian perception of the fact that there's a problem on the ground in the provinces. Mm -hmm. And this is very different from the times under the, the New Order government of President Suharto, very different. And so I don't agree with you that there's been no change. Sure, there are still human rights problems on the ground. There are still problems of uh, whereby people seek to raise political issues and there are problems between local security forces and, and people on the ground, you know, and people who support, uh, you know, sep separate, you know, or some sort of process for political separati separatism on the ground. But if you look at the broad swathe of, you know, development in, you know, political, social, economic, and the recognition of those problems in Indonesia, it's quite, it's quite different. So I, I don't agree that there's been no, no improvement. But it's one thing to recognise the political dimension of the problem, but if that recognition leads to the death of people, the two people who died in the May 1 protest, the many more wounded, the uh, arrests of the chairman of the West Papua National Committee and four others whose welfare is unknown at this stage. The 11 people who have died um, and 40 people missing in the Pukengjaya region. Uh, the 36 arrests and three killings in Sarong and surrounding areas. I, I mean, if that's the response to recognising the autonomy of the West Papuan people, that's not progress. Well, so first of all, I'd have to say that all of those cases are, are reports from a variety of people on the ground that are not fully verified. So, uh, I, but I'm not disagreeing with you with that there are such that such incidents have happened. That there are elements of such in incidents that may have happened. But the first thing I say is first we need to find <coughs> verification for you, and I'm getting you those answers on notice. But the second point to make is that yes, there, I, I did say there are still human rights problems on the ground, and I think the Indonesians themselves would recognise that. But Looking at the situation today in 2013 and comparing it with the situation 20 years ago, say in 1993, or even 10 or 15 years ago, the situation is quite different in terms of the ago? recognition 60 years ago? of the need for change and for a special autonomy package which gives the people of the Papuan provinces the ability to run their own, own affairs. And now it's not easy to implement. It's a long way from the centre in Jakarta. There are a lot of socio-economic and other complex issues to, to work out. But, but there, there has been a change. And I, I'm not saying that it's, that it's all fixed and the Indonesians themselves don't say that. That's why, as Senator Carr mentions, they, the Indonesians themselves raised this issue uh, with, uh, with him, with the Prime Minister, because they themselves know that there's a job to be done and they want to do it. And we would like to work with them to make that effective. As you say, you support Indonesia uh, territorial sovereignty over Papua, so do we, and we want to make that effective in the interests of the people of the two provinces. Well, I support the West Papuans having a, um, a, a right to determine the future that they see for themselves. Thank you, Senator um, Di Natale. At this stage, we're due to go to a break. Do you have further questions? I've got a couple more. I can, um, I can try and be quick. If you could be quick, we'll delay our break for five uh, minutes. The, um, uh, in, in an answer to a question on notice uh, uh, to defence last estimates, I was advised that over the past financial years, defence has spent uh, approximately $38 million on our defence engagement with Indonesia. And it seems to be that none of this money has been conditional on human rights improvements in, in the uh, region. Um, is there any impediment to p attaching some conditions to that, to that money uh, and, and essentially asking uh, our Indonesian uh, neighbours to comply with the bipartisan recommendations of the J. Scott report, which was um, essentially allowing human rights monitors into the region and, and allowing access uh, to uh, independent media? Well, let me answer the second part of your question uh, first, Senator. Certainly in our dialogue with the Indonesian authorities, we continue to 
argue to them that, an op that part of the special autonomy package and part of their policy should be an openness to the media and to independent human rights monitors. We say to them that the more openness, the more capacity there is for outsiders to observe what's going on, the better it would be for them. So certainly we, we continue to advocate for that. And I think that the Indonesians hear that argument, but there are different views within the Indonesian system about that. But certainly we, we continue um, to, to advocate um, for that. Um, this is a, just a, a final question to, to Minister Carr, who called for a thorough and open inquiry into the shooting uh, of independence leader Marco Tabuni at um, supplementary estimates uh, last year. Uh, I asked um, uh, about progress on that investigation. Could I have an update on the status uh, of that investigation? That is that um, uh, DFAT had asserted that the Indonesian police had launched an investigation into Marco Tabuni's death. What's the status of that investigation and has the department raised the matter with the Indonesian authorities since uh, I last asked those questions? I'll have to take that on notice. I can answer some, some of that question. Um, certainly we understand that in, that investigation um, has been underway. Uh, it may now have finished um, and uh, it's a question of whether the Indonesian um, authorities, the police authorities are prepared to uh, make those uh, that details of that public. But at this stage we're still uh, seeing whether that uh, process is finished and what, what the status of it but is. But can I expect an, an answer to that or at least a, a response on notice um, yes, yes, we'll, we'll to any further, further details? details. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll take our break now but we will resume at quarter to four. Thank you. <laughs>